So uh, call the meeting to order. And I'll begin with the roll call. Uh, Mr. Chamora. Here. Fort. Thank you. Mr. Fortin. No answer there. Okay, Mr. Kelleher. Here. Mr. Bradrick. Here. Okay, Mr. Bernardi. Here. And Michelle was. Here. Charlene Perkins Cutler. Here. And Barry Shedd. I'm here. Okay. So we do have a quorum, but we are missing one of our regular members. Uh, so under the next uh, order of business, we will seat an alternate. Uh, Michael, would you care to make a motion for uh, an alternate for Mr. Fortin's place for this evening? You're muted, Michael. Make a motion to see Barry Shed tonight. All right. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We'll pull it together. I've got an exclusive with that woman who cut her murder husband to their cat. Oh, that sounds Do we have a second on the motion? I'll second. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bradrick. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so it's unanimous. Mr. Shedd will be seated in Mr. Fortin's place. Uh, <clears throat> next order of business is to approve the minutes from the <clears throat> January 12th, 2001 regular meeting. Do I have a motion to accept them? So moved, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Bradrick. Second. We have a second. And that was Mr. Bernardi, correct? No, Fred Chamorro. Oh, Fred Chamorro. Okay. Thank you, Fred. I wasn't looking at the screen, so I didn't see who spoke. Uh, discussion. Anybody have any questions, uh, revisions, additions? Hearing none, we'll uh, vote to accept those as presented. Mr. Chamara. Aye. Mr. Fortin, uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Shedd. Aye. Okay. Mr. Kelleher. Aye. Mr. Bernardi. Same. Mr. Bradrick. Aye. Okay, and I also vote aye, so the uh, motion carries minutes are accepted. Uh, next order of business would be uh, public comment, explanation, so uh, Basically, anyone that's uh, participating in the meeting who uh, wishes to talk uh, when the time comes for public comment, uh, you can just uh, raise your hand. Uh, <clears throat> so we notice you. Uh, if you want, at any time, you can go to the chat area and type in a question or comment if you have one. And Crystal will let us know when the time comes and we will address that. Uh, if in fact you're participating in the meeting and not going to be speaking uh, during the portion of the meeting, uh, it's best if you mute yourself and then you can uh, use the space bar to temporarily uh, remove the mute feature or just click on uh, unmute. Uh, again, you can click on the chat section at any time and uh, type in a question or a comment if you wish and we'll uh, go over that during the uh, 
open portion of the meeting. Uh, also, if uh, someone's participating uh, on their cell phone, calling in, uh, if you hit star nine, that will give us a, uh, an indication uh, that you would like to speak. All right. We will move on to item six. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Mike, I'm sorry I'm late. Well, that's all right, David, but we I tried to get a hold of you. Uh, so I guess you're going to have to kind of sit this one out. Uh, we, I don't we, think so. I, I'm here. I didn't appoint anybody. Well, no, but uh, when we call the roll, Mr. Shedd, uh, ended up being uh, seated in your place. Uh, sorry about that. Mm. Go ahead. I'm here. <laughs> I, I, I understand that, but uh, uh, we unfortunately we've already passed that portion of the business. Uh, okay, well. But we're definitely glad you're here and, and your, your comments <laughs> are always worthwhile. So uh, like I say, except for the fact that uh, on a vote, Mr. Shedd will be uh, voting tonight. All right. You good with that, David? No, but I heard it. Uh, <laughs> All right, as I say, I'm, I'm sorry. But... All right, next order of business is uh, number six, old business. Uh, first item is uh, update on the state budget. Uh, can you hear me? Mike, can I you can, hear me? I can hear you, Karen. Okay, um, so at this point tomorrow, the governor will be addressing the state budget. So. Hopefully I'll have some answers um, as to an indication of what we may be actually getting for ECS and some other municipal aid. Um, to date, we've received two ECS payments, both in the amount of uh, a little over 1.2 million. And we received um, a half portion of our town aid road. But other than that, um, I don't have any updates on the state other than that. Okay. Uh, Fred, have you heard anything? A little hearsay that be no less, probably more than um, in the state aid. Definitely, well, probably a little, maybe a little more in ECS. I'm not sure about the pilots and some of the other things, but I don't think there's, there's not going to be any cuts. There might be more. Well, uh, yeah, the one thing that I did get from the state was basically for the circuit breaker, which is the elderly credit program, and also for the veterans and disabled. Um, anybody that was currently getting those credits last year do not have to fill out another application. This year, they're extending it under the COVID um, executive orders by Governor Lamont. Um, I did also read that, you know, he, he basically stated he's not going to cut municipal aid. But again, I haven't heard the numbers, so. No, I have no numbers. <clears throat> All right. Anyone else? No, hearing nothing, we will move on to item B, update on the local bridge project. Jay, do you want to chime in on that? Can you all hear me? I can hear you. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see. I just got news today um, on the local bridge. Um, it looks like the uh, in order, it's going to be the Peak Brook Road would be first to go out to bid. Hopkins would be second. Um, and I, I'm reading a thing from an engineer. Uh, this went to, uh, I was copied and Karen was copied. It went to uh, John Navarro today uh, from the CHA, which is the engineering firm. Um, basically, they're moving ahead. They expect that uh, mid-March for spring, summer coming up for construction, they're going out to bid. Um, and on this is on uh, Peakbrook. 
and they're hoping that they will be going out in the fall uh, for Hopkins Road. Uh, the design plans are about 70% completed and they need to finalize. There's some questions about ledge, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they're hoping to have that ready to go out to bid for this fall of 2021, which will be ready for construction in 2022. Uh, one thing, and there's some other stuff here too, but that's the two biggest. Um, one of the things I should mention is that uh, steep grants uh, have been previously closed out. And a lot of these go back to, I believe, 2012 or 2014. Um, one of the problems that we had was trying to find out, was the money still available? And we, we couldn't get straight answers anyway. Those have been clo closed out, so we're going from, you know, from uh, um, step one at this point. But it's looking good for the two bridges initially. Jay, can I chime in? You may. Um, so basically, we are still part of the local bridge program, um, which I believe when we originally went to referendum to pass this project, we were guesstimating about a 48% uh, reimbursement on Peak Brook and Hopkins. I believe we're still trying to get Butts Road in that local bridge. So hopefully we will have some reimbursement for that one too. Um, the one thing that concerns me is keeping a close eye on the finances because this is going to be at least a two to three year project for all these bridges. So right now interest rates are really low. Um, normally when we are ready to go to bid on the project, we would start also going to bid for financing. Um, usually we start with a ban, which is a bond anticipation note. And that usually is about a 12 month period before we have to start making interest payments. Um, normally a ban can be um, ex you know, extended for like up to three years, but you're basically only paying for interest, not on um, principal. So as I speak to our financial advisor, I'd like to get quotes to see what having a full bond versus a ban, because if the rates are really low, it may make more sense to lock in on a bond now than to actually start with a ban and then roll over to a bond. Um, other than that, you know, it's kind of hard because we just, we really don't want the money just sitting there paying interest, uh, not knowing exactly when these projects will actually be completed. That's, that's what concerns me a little bit about the finances. Um, but that being said, once we know for sure when they're ready to go to bid for the first project, um, we should start really, you know, making sure we have some financing secured because most of the time we have to have this money secured um, and show proof to the state if we're going to be getting any type of reimbursement. <clears throat> All right. So that's something we'll be discussing in much greater detail, I'm sure. Not. Uh, in the not too distant future. Mm -hmm. Anyone have any questions on that? No questions at this time? Okay. That being said, we'll move on to the uh, next item, which is uh, update on the town hall renovations. Uh, Jay, you want to start on that? Sure. Renovations. It's been a long road. Anyway, that said, uh, renovations. We, we first discussed this back in June. Um, we had taken, I think, $5,000 from contingency. Uh, we've run into some issues, issues such as uh, we moved, any of you that have been in the town hall know how the lobby looks. And you also in past discussions know why we did what we did um, with access to the town clerk and the uh, tax collector. Um, we have had painting done recently. We had some surprises because we had the fire marshal uh, because of uh, code issues. We had to get specialized hardware for exit doors. Um, and we finally got the hardware. We also had security changes because of people that go out to meet individuals in the lobby 
and to come back in if they didn't bring their uh, key or fob, they're gonna have to ring a bell. So we had to put in a keypad so staff that go out to meet with individuals can get back in. That's all done. I believe the last thing to uh, be done, and this is again, fire marshal requirement, we have to put an exit sign that is lit above the door. Um, we do not have all of the bills, uh, but the project itself is like 99.5% done. We have not received all of the bills for the work that has been done. Um, I'm gonna to toss this over to Karen, if I may, only because we're looking at funding for what we're gonna owe. And again, we don't have all the bills, but she has some ideas on things that we can repurpose or money we can repurpose towards this. So Karen? Yep, somebody else is talking. I can hear people talking um, in the background. I don't know, okay. Um, so basically, the invoices um, as of June 30 were $5,000, which uh, like Jay said, came from the contingency. So the remaining balance of this project right now is close to 8,500. Um, we're just waiting for the exit sign to really be done with the project and that we don't have a cost. I, I can't imagine it being more than a few hundred, but again, you know, that's just um, my opinion. However, um, we received some FEMA grant reimbursement which was for some COVID related items uh, between March and June of 2020. Uh, the reason the money did not get, th this is a reimbursement grant for expenses we've already you know, um, incurred. So speaking with our auditors, because uh, the uh, grant was actually awarded late October and the funds did not get deposited um, until December 16th, we were able to deposit those in this current year. And we can ask the Board of Finance to repurpose those funds. Um, it's about $3,991 to use that towards the completion of this project. And then the remaining funds um, to finish up this project would either have to come from our um, can, you know, uh, town hall repairs and maintenance line item, if that's uh, the way that Jay would like to go with this. Or you know he can ask for other funding to come from either CNR or contingency. But if I, you if you do allow us to use the grant, I will give you a motion that would have to be um, stated in the minutes, and you would have to vote on that to repurpose those funds. Karen, uh, if I may, just to answer the issue you just raised about uh, it would be my choice. I would just as soon ask for money to be used. And the reason I say that is the town hall funds that are already there. I have no idea what's going to occur in the next uh, four or five months. And, and, and this is something else I'm going to be talking about emergency in a couple of minutes. We, <laughs> it's been quite the year for us. So anyway, I would just as soon uh, look for additional funding and whatever money we have available, keep it there for now. Okay, well, that, that would be up to the Board of Finance. So I guess uh, we're asking, first of all, we're asking for um, $3,991.57 from the FEMA reimbursement grant to be repurposed um, and used towards the um, completion of the town hall project. And that balance would be probably around um, 4,500. And it looks like Jay would like to ask you to take the other 4,500 from your contingency. Yes, uh, that's correct. Would someone care to make that as a motion? I, I would make a motion to move, uh, to repurpose the money that was reimbursed from FEMA. Um, make that one motion, then we can discuss the other possibility later. Okay, I can give you... I can give you the actual motion. Okay. Are you, oh, okay, you ready? Yeah. So the motion- well, I'm not be, writing it down, so. <laughs> no, but this, this would be for the minute, uh, the recording right. clerk, so she can right. have this in your minutes. Um, and Cindy, feel free to ask me tomorrow to put it in writing if it helps or whatever. So actually the motion would be to appropriate unbudgeted FEMA reimbursement revenue to be used towards the town hall renovation project. 
And Mr. Kelleher, you move that, correct? That is the motion I will make. Okay. Do we have a second on that motion? Second. All right. Uh, and that was made by? Fred Schmore. All right, Fred, thank you. Discussion. Anyone? All right, then we'll call it to a vote. Mr. Chamara? Aye. Mr. Shedd? Aye. Mr. Bradrick? Aye. Mr. Bernardi? Aye. Mr. Kelleher? Aye. And I also vote aye, which uh, makes it unanimous. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Now, do we want to discuss the further expenditures at this time or wait until the next meeting? The chair. Yes. And it's my opinion that we should um, wait. Um, I understand uh, Mr. Swan's concern. However, um, if that money in the town hall budget with the current budget is used up and he needs additional money later on the fiscal year, then I think he should come back and appropriate it. I'm not really comfortable about giving an additional appropriation on the maybe we might need the money basis. So I would be opposed to that motion at this time. Well, we haven't, that, there's no motion right now, so. Right. Well, uh, if there was a motion, I, I'm, I'm opposed to that concept. Okay. Anyone else? I agree, I agree with Fred. We don't know what those numbers are right now. Okay. Charlene? Well, I just want some clarification. So we originally uh, approved an expenditure on May 5th for $5,000. Correct. And now, um, Karen, I think you said about $8,500 more is what yeah. this is going to run. Yes. So a $5,000 project is running like 170% over budget. And so the, the original was a guesstimate using our town crew, meaning the highway department to do most of the work. And then unfortunately, um, when the fire marshal came in to do some inspections, we had to get additional work to meet fire code. And yes, um, those crash bars, that hardware, all the- um, um, Emergency lighting. Emergency lighting. Yeah. We had to get video cameras, um, all that other stuff to update the security <clears throat> panel. I have invoices here in front of me. Um, I brought them with me. Um, and right now the invoices that need to get paid out this week or next week um, come to $8,367. And that is for paint, um, also for the actual labor for painting, the entranceway and that um, all the new um, trim work and things like that. Murdoch Electric, um, what they needed to do for all the new contacts and all the new video cameras and all that other stuff was $4,083. And we had to have advanced law come in and give us, we purchased all the hardware and that was $3,310.50. And we had already paid six, uh, $1,600 for that. So yes, I have, I brought them with me. I do have them. And it's unfortunate that something we thought was going to be very cost effective turned out to be a lot more specialty than we could do on our own. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kelleher, you have any anything else to say on that? Uh, you're muted right now, Jeff. J Jeff, you're muted right now. I know. I was trying to click in the wrong place. Um, <laughs> do, is there enough money currently in the budget to cover the current invoices? Um, yes. We um, as of today, we have a little over thirteen thousand left in the town hall repair and maintenance line item. So, using this FEMA money we do have enough in the current budget to cover the additional cost and um, for this particular project. Yes, there is money in there. Right, so I, I would agree with Fred and Mike that we would hold off. And if there were, if there is a need in the future, we sir, please come back, but is not, 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 not to throw extra money into the budget um, until we need to, I guess would be my, my opinion. 
Well, seeing as how you mentioned Mike, that was the other Mike who said that, but uh, you can add this Mike to that train of thought as well. Uh, Mr. Shedd, you have anything? No, I, I agree. We shouldn't be uh, expanding any of the budgets. Well, let's take a look and see where we're going to be, and that'd probably be the more prudent way to go. Thank you. So, so I just would like to clarify, we wouldn't be asking for any appropriation of funds, like additional funding. We would be asking to use your contingency other than our line item. It's, it's all in the same budget. Not, not that it matters, but just for clarification, we would not be appropriating additional funds. Mr. Bradrick? I am disappointed that uh, the cost overrun went to that level. I'm not saying it wasn't necessary, but it would have been nice to know about it earlier on. Uh, we did discuss it at our yep. last budget meeting, that it was going to be a lot more, but we didn't have um, all the final invoices at that point. If, if I could just jump in uh, and answer, I guess, to Roy and, and for all of you, is an estimate, as we all know, is an estimate. It's given the current circumstances what we believe it will cost to accomplish something. And again, as, as Karen mentioned, a lot of the things we ran into were issues with um, building department on code um, fire marshal on code and specialized equipment. And then the other thing is, as long as we're going to do it, do it right. So again, a lot of the issues were security issues with access, keypads, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I'm not apologizing. I'm just saying that it, it's like any of us run into uh, doing any work at our homes. You get an estimate. <laughs> And that's given the best information you can, what you think it will cost. And that's why we are where we are today. Thank you. Uh, Michelle, do you have anything that you'd like to say? No, I kind of agree with everybody that we should hold off till we know, you know, and if the funds are needed or not. Very good. And Mr. Fortin? Are you there, David? Um, I don't have anything to say. Okay. All right. So uh, we have we have moved uh, and approved the uh, thirty nine ninety one fifty seven. Uh, so you have that, and I would say at this time just go with the funds that you have currently in your town hall maintenance budget, and if in fact you need additional uh funds transferred uh then uh by all means come back and ask us thank you okay go on to item d uh request for town hall emergency expenditure uh, i guess you're up again jay yes yes it's it's the jay swan comedy hour <laughs> anyway, um, we, yeah, we've, we've run into an issue with the heating system. Um, I believe it's the original system. Uh, I believe, if any, there's been minor repairs to it. Um, we found that it was failing. Um, we did recently this week, and we have not received the um, um, estimate or the bill there was a, what I call a Band-Aid process done, all right? And it was to hold us over through the heating season. So we should be okay with the heat in the town hall through the season. Um, however, at the end of this season, in you know April, May, whatever, when it warms up a little bit, we're gonna have to do a major uh, repair. Uh, estimates from the company we deal with, and, and, and again, I have nothing to do with this. The company happens to be named Swan. I have no interest in them. I'm not a part owner. Uh, Roy, I see you smiling. Don't do that, my <laughs> friend. Uh, anyway, the Swan folks have come out. They've looked at it, um, and we're looking at approximately 
um, $15,000 to complete this total repair over, you know, after the heating systems uh, season is over. So, um, and again, this is why I asked to have money uh, kept in, you know, for emergencies at rainy day type fund. Uh, we never expected this. All of a sudden, one day we didn't have heat. Uh, we, we managed, uh, we did not close, um, but we ended up doing a, a temporary repair this week. Um, and the major repair is going to be at the, uh, after the heating season's over. And again, we're looking at approximately uh, $15,000. Karen, do you have anything to add to that or? Um, sure, I just would like to say that I'm sure everybody received the proposal um, that Jay has signed. Um, I, I wanted to let you all be aware that we did get um, another person to come in and look at the system. Um, and the reason we chose to stay with Swan is because they are the company that has been maintaining the system for the town for many, many years. They're very familiar with the system and um, Another, another company that came in also felt that they were not able to fully re do this repair based on the number of units we also have to flush in the ceiling. I think there's about 18 or 19 units up there that would each have to individually, um, from what I'm understanding, getting flushed out. Another, another reason why we're asking for more than what's on this quote is because if you see underneath the price where it says if glycol is needed, um, we believe there is approximately 400 gallons of glycol in the system. And we think it's about $15 per gallon, which was something that was um, verbally quoted to John Navarro. So um, until they really get into the system and start doing the actual uh, repair, we don't know how much glycol will have to be replaced. And if we did have to replace all 400 gallons, it would probably be <coughs> close to about five or 6,000, but we're not really sure. So again, it's unknown until they, you know, get into the system and start doing the um, actual repair. Well, when they begin the repair, they're going to have to drain the system. And so they'll have to store that glycol. And at the time uh, that they do that, they'll have to send out a sample uh, to a lab and have it tested and make sure that it meets the current standards and also uh, that it's uh, suitable to put back back in, that it's, that it's not uh, expired its uh, life. Uh, so that, that's something, unfortunately, we won't know until uh, the system's been drained. So that's uh, probably come April. Uh, what, what is the current... Uh, need right now what what uh, what what do you need to have uh, at this time um, I don't believe we need to have anything like right now because the initial um, B and data as Jay would call it we um, verbally were told possibly up to a thousand dollars for that actual repair um, they came out I think last Friday did not get the invoice yet we um, looking looking at this particular um, proposal at this point. Um, if there was anything that we would have to do up front, you know, we could we could definitely um, take it from our existing budget and again come back to you at another point in April, um, you know, or May when this system is going to get actually repaired. If you feel better about waiting, to, you know, and see where our budget is at that point. But um, it's definitely, we thought we were gonna have to have it done sooner than later, but we um, had them do a, a patch for now. So we didn't have to shut down the town hall because this would require a couple of days of you know, no heat, no water in the town hall. Everything would have to be shut down. Um, we didn't want to have to close the town hall to the public. Um, and we knew we were having some really cold days coming ahead. So Jay, do you wanna elaborate any more? No, actually, I think you covered it all, uh, certainly in more detail than, than I was willing to do. But yeah, bottom line, that's where we're at. And again, I do not believe, I think this is the original system. 
And I also think that there has not been any meaningful repairs to it um, since it was installed. So we actually, you know, as Karen alluded to, we're, we're fortunate because when this first occurred, we were thinking we're going to have to close down. We're thinking we, the work would have to be done on a Wednesday because they needed two days afterwards to monitor it in, in case they had to go and get additional parts. And the parts are not something you can run to Avishan and pick up, they specialized parts. So um, we kind of dodged the bullet in that this um, temporary repair should, uh, and we believe it will last us until the heating season's over. So again, we're looking at uh, perhaps May. We don't have any firm dates, but when the heating system's over. So no, uh, we're, we're in pretty good shape, I think. All right. Uh, anyone have any comments or questions to Tamara? No. All right, Mr. Shedd. Barry? No, I'm, I'm good. You're good. All right, Mr. Bernardi? No, nothing right now. Mr. Bradrick? Wondering if this uh, can be done after the 1st of July in the next budget. Jay, would you like to answer that? I don't know, but I would think possibly uh, because, again, it's, it's the heat. So... I, yeah, I mean, that's something we could certainly look into, Roy. All right. In fact, uh, yeah, let me look into that and, and see if, uh, if that could be done after July 1. Sounds like a plan. Mr. Kelleher. I'm all set for now. Okay. Mr. Fortin. Um, no, I don't, I don't think I have anything right now. What's the age of the system? I'm sorry. You've already said that already, Jay. I think, uh, whenever the town hall was built, I is that 30 years? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. The other, you know, the other thing I just thought of is, um, one of the issues that we have, and it was explained to me originally when this, uh, first presented itself and, Roy, this goes back to what you mentioned about July. <laughs> Apparently, the glycol, which basically, you know, folks use, um, you know, it's antifreeze in, in, in your cars, but the glycol interacts with the water. Over a period of time, it develops an acidity, and that's why we're in the problem we're, we're, we're having right now, because the acidity has increased where it's eating away at the fittings. So now I'm starting to wonder um, if we, you know, it's sort of, as Karen mentioned, originally it was we're going to do this as soon as possible. But we're running around figuring, oh God, what days are we going to be closed? Can people stay home? Who can work from home and all this? And then we kind of dodged the bullet by putting it off to the end of the heating system season. And now my concern is I'm not sure we can wait to July 1 because the acidity, which creates problems with the fittings, was a big issue for the Swan Company. So, yeah, Roy, in answer to your issue or your question, I'm not sure we can wait. So I think it's a matter of testing to find out what the acidity is, and then, you know, how can we do it sooner rather than later? If I may, uh, oh, um how long has Swan been maintaining the system? They didn't catch this before? No, uh, for years. And, and again, our system is so well. In fact, I don't think they use systems like this anymore because in talking to John Navarro, there are newer systems. So me being me, I asked, hey, can we switch over to one of these newer sisters systems? And I got the look, meaning that it would be prohibitively costly to go to a newer system. So if you had, if we were building a town hall today, yeah, we would have a newer system. So um, yeah, that would be the issue. And it's not something that you can, you can test the acidity, but I think it has to reach a point where you have a problem and then they start worrying about it because it's kind of a sealed system. 
there is access to it, but it's it's more sealed than open. And again, I you know these folks, uh, Swan, and I don't even know if Karen knows this. My knowledge is they've been answered. They've been dealing with this forever. This system, um, mm -hmm. and they do preventive maintenance. They check it, you know, once twice a year. This sort of thing. So I'm not sure they could have picked up on this problem occurring at some point. And I don't know if this system has a reputation of, you know, after 30 years having problems. I, I honestly don't know. All right, Charlene, you have any questions or comments? Michelle? No. I'm All right. Off. So, Thanks, Mike. Pardon me. I said I'm, I'm all set. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. So we'll uh, we'll set that item aside for now and uh, revisit it uh, in the future if we can get some more information. Possibly, uh, we would appreciate that, Mr. Swan. Uh, as uh, as it was stated, uh, we really can't do anything till the winter season's over anyway. So, uh, but it would be nice to be prepped and ready to go uh, if, uh, if it is something that has to be done right away uh, so that further damage isn't caused. Uh, another possibility might be if you talk to them, uh, if it is the uh, acidity in the glycol that's in the system. We know the system's going to have to be drained anyway. Uh, maybe if, in fact, they, uh, as soon as the winter heating season is over, if we don't actually start the project until after July, maybe we could possibly just have them come and drain the system so that there's no further deter deterioration in the plumbing, which is going to cause the leaks and damage that we're trying to prevent. We could certainly ask about that. That's a good point. And again, this is this is all new because it hasn't happened before in 30 years. So uh, your point's well taken, Mike. All right, anyone else on that? If not, we will move on to the next item. And that is... Uh, Item E, uh, to discuss the potential for a uh, tri-board meeting. We had uh, a brief discussion on that at our last meeting, and uh, we really didn't come to any conclusion as to where we were going to go. Uh, our actual first budget presentation uh, is scheduled for March 2nd at this time. Uh, so I don't know if uh, anybody has any uh, will or ideas or uh, possible suggestions as to uh, where we might go with a tri-board meeting or if we uh, just want to decide not to have one this year. So, uh, Mr. Chamora. Uh, I have no further suggestions. So if we, if they, if there's a will to have one, I'm fine with it. All right, uh, Mr. Shed. This is something that's typically done in non-COVID times. Uh, well, we we actually started a couple of years ago doing this. It was just uh, kind of basically what we would do is we had a round table where the board of finance, the board of selectmen, and uh, the Board of Education all got together in, in one room so that we could all talk uh, and, you know, uh, kind of air our needs and wishes and uh, hopefully come up with some suggestions with everybody working together uh, that we could go forward with looking at the uh, upcoming budget season. Uh, but with COVID and everything else, it's, it's, it's tough because we can't really get everybody in a room. Uh, 
you can see with the size of the group meeting we have here, uh, I know they have larger meetings with the, with the uh, uh, zoning uh, and they, they manage, but uh, you know, we're talking uh, our nine board member uh, members, we're talking the board of eds, nine, nine members, uh, we're talking the superintendent, the business manager, uh, the three selectmen, uh, you know, you're looking at a, a, at a big crowd and to try to get, actually make something worthwhile. I'm not, I'm not quite sure if, if we could, if we could do this. And, and, uh, as I had uh, said to, uh, Megan, good to see you, Megan. Uh, uh, as I had told her when, uh, she asked me if we were planning on having one this year, uh, back a couple of months ago when it first came up, uh, I told her at that time, I, I, I'm all for it if we could work out the logistics. Uh, but under the current conditions, I, I just don't know. I, I, I don't know how that's going to work out. So yeah. Nothing, nothing's been easy lately. No, no, it hasn't. And it uh, doesn't look like it's going to get any easier any sooner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bernardi. Although good meetings, I think we're too late for our tri board right now. I I, well, right. that's I, I kind of ag agree there. Uh, it, it's going to be it's going to be tough no matter how we do it, no matter what we do, uh, just because of the situation. Uh, there's so many unknown uh, cost factors that could crop up out there. Whether there's going to be federal money or state money that's going to come in to help us out, God only knows. So so I think. Uh, I, I'm kind of thinking that we've we've just got to push forward with the with the schedule, and and uh, work on it as as the things come up. We get we get the board of ed proposal uh, or or request. We get the board of selectmen's request. Then we meet. We discuss it uh, where we want to go with it. Uh, you know. Then then we we do the combined. Uh, and once we have the combined, then we have to make a decision as to how much we're actually going to spend and how we're going to split it up, uh, proportion it out. But the first thing we got to do uh, before we can do any of that, really, we, we don't have a, a, a firm number and we're trying to nail something down here. Uh, Tomorrow, hopefully, the governor's uh, speech will be uh, helpful if he gives us uh, some assurances that there won't be any cuts. Uh, I know it's been said that it's there aren't supposed to be any, and there may even be increases, but it's state government. I don't want to hear it. Show me the money. Uh, so uh, until we know what, uh, have an estimate on our costs for uh on the education side, which is allowable by Prop 46, special ed, transportation increases, uh, what we have uh, for, a, for a firm number on our uh, uh, increase in the uh, revenue from taxes uh, based on the old or current mill rate, and then any possible increases we may in fact get from the state uh, until we have some kind of number there. And I, I'm just throwing this out, but you can say I said it. I, I'm not gonna back away from it. I'm, I'm thinking to be perfectly honest with you, we're looking at a budget increase this year in total of somewhere between 635 and $735,000. Not a lot of money, I know, I can see. I, I can see the grimaces on the people from the education side already, but I, I, that's, I think that's where we're going to be somewhere in that neighborhood on Prop 46. Um, Mike, just to, not that I have anything written in stone, but I also think that uh, right up and through till April, when you have your final budget, I, I think we're going to expect most of these meetings are also going to be via Zoom, which also makes it a little tough for presentations because Last year, we were able to present um, 
in person, both, you know, Janice and I and Jay, and then all of a sudden COVID hit and everything went by the wayside. So um, that makes it a little tougher too, because we don't even know if we're going to be able to, um, you know, pass a budget in person this year. There's, there's a lot of things that are still unknown. Um, I know that Janice and I were talking about um, just preparing our budgets this year have been extremely difficult. There's been a lot of challenges, I think more for her than myself, but just going back and forth. Every time you turn around, there's another change. You know, there's another change in numbers for insurance increases. I mean, there is going to be a lot of increases on our end for insurances and, you know, pension and things of that nature. But I haven't really begun to even give you an idea of revenues. And usually those aren't discussed till the very end of March anyway, after we do the combined budget. So I, I know Janice um, may want to bring something up at this point regarding the yeah. Board of Ed budget with some suggestions. Um, Janice, do you wanna chime in? Sure, um, we just heard a couple, last week that we were going to be receiving um, 593,000 in uh, ESSER number two. Uh, that grant is going to be initiated next week and I have a month to turn it around and it's a, it's a three-year grant. So it, we have from now until September 23rd to use the funds, um, but the grant application is more rigorous than the other grant applications <laughs> have been so far. Um, so that in conjunction with the budget and, and the numbers, not necessarily, it's just been, so we've been so busy doing grants and whether we're hybrid and not hybrid, and it, it's just put a strain on everyone um, that I, would truly like to request that we not have, have to present, um, that we not present our budget uh, as we as there's planned on the 2nd of March. Um, I would like to extend, request an extension so that we can su uh, submit it to you later, um, possibly at the 23rd uh, meeting, or if you want prior, um, I, I mean, I, I I have numbers that I need to present to the board and they haven't even been presented to the board. Hopefully we'll start doing it this Thursday. Um, but at the same time, I'm also having to write this other grant, um, which impacts several years, which also impacts how our funds are uh, uh, outlaid in our budget. So I don't know, Victor, if you wanted to add anything more to that, to my request or. Yeah, thank you, Janice. Yeah, it's just um, we do have these potential impactful items that would benefit from a delay. In addition to that um, $593,000 grant that there were, we're waiting for clarification on from the state, we're also awaiting a ruling from the State Department of Ed on whether we need to provide remote instruction in the fall. Um, which would impact our staffing requirements. Superintendents have requested a ruling um, from the state to allow us to provide only in-person learning. So that's something we're waiting on. And then, as you know, there's the potential for significant additional federal funding through the American Rescue Plan that once again could have just a major impact on what our budget request could look like. So if there was the possibility of delaying our presentation till March 23rd um, or perhaps the, a week earlier, it would be very helpful. I think it would benefit the town. So it's just a request that we're putting <coughs> in. Thank you for considering it. All right. Uh, Mr. Bradrick, do you have anything? I don't think it's prudent or practical to have a tri-board meeting. Uh, can we swap out uh, town government for the March 2nd meeting? No. no. No, and the only reason why I say that is because we still have to have um, our whole board, you know, the board of selectmen meet to discuss and look at the budget submissions. I haven't even, normally by now we've already started that. Um, I'm about two weeks behind. You know, I had some staffing issues in my office, so I was alone for several weeks, um, you know, just trying to keep things up to date in that office uh, while trying to do a budget as well. And for us, we've had some uh, municipal CRF funding come back and, you know, we were sharing it with the school, trying to figure out 
uh, what we're gonna reimburse on our end for this current year. Um, we would probably um, trying to plan on having a meeting with the selectmen uh, just to start discussing our own budget towards the end of February and they would still need to uh, approve that at their May, Jay, correct me if I'm wrong, May 4th or 5th? March. I'm sorry, March 4th or 5th. I don't know, have the calendar in front of me um, before we could present it on the 9th. So, so we'd like to stick to our schedule and present yeah. it on the 9th. I, yeah, I think we'll be ready by then. That's correct. We're going to have to have an initial meeting to discuss prior to the selectmen's meeting. Well, let me let me uh, throw this out to uh, Victor, Janice, and Megan. Uh, do you think there's any possibility that you could be prepared to give us a basic uh, budget request, some, some idea of what uh, you would be looking for uh, on the 9th? Hi, I'll, I'll chime in and Janice and um, Victor can certainly um, add as well, but I do not think so. In addition to what they have um, let you know, we are still actually waiting for numbers from Woodstock Academy as well. I don't think we've believed, I don't think we've received their special education um, tuition yet. We have been told that there will not be an increase in regular education, but the Board of Trustees have not, has not voted on that yet as well. And we also haven't heard about anything regarding the capital assessment fee. So in addition to all the grants and the unknowns regarding hybrid, remote, and in-person learning, that is also a significant portion of our budget that is still currently unknown. And unfortunately at the moment, I don't know if the Board of Trustees um, this year has also designated um, to their Board of Finance, its Board of Finance um, approval of that or whether the full board needs to meet again. Victor? Um, the only other thing I wanna say is, um, Michael, you're probably aware of um, the contortions that Karen and Janice had to go through to get the audit through this um, past year. Um, the audit itself was an, it was pretty much a nightmare, I know, for Karen and Janice because of all the different funding elements that were involved. So that really has, I know, delayed us. And I know that's had a tremendous impact on Karen as well. So it's just been, like you, everyone has said, it's been a nightmare of a school year, of a year. So any, any assistance you can give us additional time would be greatly appreciated. Janice? Yes, I was just gonna mention normally in uh, December, the audit is all done and we're working on the budget and we were well involved in still with the audit um, in the EFS report that was needed to be submitted as well as the revenue that was coming in for all the CRF and the ESSER and how to account properly account for that. There was just a lot more work involved with the audit taking much needed time away from the budget. So we find ourselves that we're scrambling for, um, you know, to get all of the, the, the proper numbers. And I, I don't want to give a budget that I haven't, you know, worked and reworked and, and worked some more um, because I, I realize what it impacts for the, the taxpayers of Woodstock. So I want to make sure that I'm giving an audit, uh, a request, a budget request and presenting that to both the Board of Ed and the Board of Finance. Um, that's, you know, the, what we need to face the challenges that we have. And a, a big impact on that is again, this grant that I have to write and the, um, the fact that whether the state is going to allow us to come back full, full. we are budgeting for that to happen. Um, but, you know, they may say we can't. So that's again, yet something else that's up in the air. All right, uh, Mr. Kelleher. You're muted, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, I know. I just had to get to the button. <laughs> <laughs> well, so uh, 
we're, we're a long way from the original question i think you asked but um well it all it, it's basically <laughs> a, a general discussion about the potential tri-board meeting so um, um I, I, I would have I to say we've, we've done it twice i know and um other than we come to the conclusion that prop 46 really makes it difficult uh to budget and uh we kind of will know sooner well, we'll know it in time what the uh, what the maximum possible budget is, and and that's what we're going to tell the board of ed and the the board of selectmen to to base their budgets on. So I'm not sure how much we would gain from from a tri board meeting. Um, the fact that Megan and Victor and Janice and Jay and Karen are at so many of these meetings, I mean, I think we also kind of accomplish a lot of what would be accomplished at a tri board meeting anyway and and that's about all i have to say about that well i i kind of agree with you on that but uh as far as being off the original question yeah you're right but but it's it's kind of almost like uh we're having a tri board meeting right now <laughs> that, that was kind of what i was that was kind of my point right now yeah um, and, I can i bring something up I'm, I'm just looking at the march calendar so i know that we already submitted everything but we can still cancel a meeting and then reschedule a meeting. So if you feel that March 23rd may be too late, what if they, what if we came in and presented on the 9th and they presented the following Tuesday, maybe the 16th, and then by the 23rd, we'd have the final numbers for the revenue that that's an option and we can cancel the, the second. I don't know if that would work for anybody. Um, uh, it works for me, but I just I just want to get the rest of the board members' opinions here first, or anything they might have to add, and then we can look for uh, a motion. But um, the board of selectmen uh, believes they'll be ready on the ninth, correct? Uh, yeah, I think we can be ready by the ninth. Okay, and how how does that work with uh, you, Victor? Megan and Janice, as far as uh, the 16th, possibly. That would be a super benefit to everyone. I, we really appreciate it. It would be great. Janice? That would be great. Thank you. Megan? I'm deferring to Janice. She's the one with the deadline for the grant <laughs> that we don't want to miss. OK. Uh, That sounds good to me. Uh, so we'll uh, once we get everybody else's uh, input here on the board, then we will uh, uh, accept a motion, uh, make a decision one way or the other here where we're going to go with the uh, schedule. Uh, Mr. Fortin. Yeah. I'm not sure what you're asking me. Well, basically, <laughs> yeah. Well, Hey, like I said, this, it, it, this kind of turned into our uh, tri-board meeting, but basically what we're looking at is whether or not we're going to have one. Uh, it was to discuss the potential for one, and we're, we're kind of, I think right now, we're all at the point that uh, with the time that there is, the time constraints that there are, and the amount of work that has to be done on uh, all the budgets and with the unknowns uh, that are there, uh, tri-board meeting probably is uh, a moot point for this year. But, um, you know, we're discussing probably doing away with the uh, March 2nd meeting, canceling that, and uh, go with the uh, March 9th meeting would be the Board of Selectmen as scheduled would do their budget presentation. The 16th, the following Tuesday uh, would be the uh, Board of Ed would do their presentation. And then again, the following week, we would get all those numbers together. And if there were any changes within that time period from either side, you know, they could make those changes uh, for the 23rd. So let me take those one at a time. First of all, I think um, it's probably too late for a tri board meeting, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, we heard some some of the concerns from the two different boards in the last five minutes. Um, I generally think it's um, usually a productive exchange 
of um, what concerns that each board has. Again, it's probably too late. As far as the schedule changes that you've suggested, I don't have any um, any objection to those. All right. Charlene. Um, I would concur. I think it makes sense to um, switch out those meetings, not have the tri board meeting this year. Um, if we switch to the 9th and the 16th for the individual budgets, um, if we needed to build in more time, we still have the 30th of March too, so that you know there's a little fallback position and this may be the year that we really need it. So the only thing we have to be careful as we get towards the end of May, I'm sorry, at the end of March, Charlene, is that we have to um, have a public hearing and there has to be a certain, it has to be done within a certain number of days for me to be able to get out all the information for that. I believe it's um, five days. So that would kind of make it tough for the public hearing. Well, couldn't we push the public hearing further into April? I, I don't believe so. I believe that's all under statute, but I'd be more than happy to double check on that. It's all part of the well, budget process. Yeah. Well, hopefully we, we won't need any um, any bumpers here on that end either, but um, I guess we just really all have to be open to making it work however it takes to make it work this year. Agreed. Agreed. Yep. Michelle? You're muted. Yeah, yeah, I was having a hard time unmuting. Oh. I have satellite internet. It's not ideal. I'm just letting you know. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I, uh, my opinion on the tri-board meeting is, although I do think it's very beneficial and I, I, I hate to see it not continue after this year, I think it, the timing of it this year, is, it's just too late. And I think the logistics of it would not make it as productive. I, I don't I think this is a forum that's conducive to open conversation. It's kind of awkward, you know, the exchange back and forth with everybody together. But that being said, I don't want, I, I don't want it to stop going forward, you know, just because we're not doing it this year. I think it's important to do going forward. Um, and with regard to the timing of the Board of Ed's presentation, budget presentation, I think if we can, like Charlene said, I completely agree with her. You know, be as flexible as possible so we have the best information um, that we can going forward, given the timing of things. I think that's important. All right. Anyone else have anything on that? All right. Hearing none, I don't generally like to make motions, but I would like to move that at this time we plan to cancel the March 2nd meeting, the March 9th Board of Selectmen's presentation meeting will go on as scheduled, the Board of Ed uh, presentation meeting will be scheduled for March the 16th, and that will be followed by the combined budgets on the 23rd. Can I get a second on that? So moved. Thank you, Michael. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Chamora, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Shedd? Aye. Mr. Bernardi? Aye. Mr. Braderick? Aye. Mr. Kelleher? Aye. And I vote aye. So therefore we have a unanimous vote and those changes will be made. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all very much for your input. Uh, believe me, it's, <laughs> it's gonna be a rough year. That's all there is to it. I, I just hope, hope that this is the last one we have to go through like this. All right. Mike, I just have, I have one question. Um, go ahead. Which, about the motion you just made. I didn't know if, as a point of order if we needed to add that to the agenda before we made the motion and voted on it. Uh, we were talking about the tri-board meeting.
I don't I don't think it needs to be because it okay. it was all part of the process. All right. I believe. Anybody else have any issue with it? Uh, I don't have an issue with it. I just no, don't no, want no, it to become an issue. I, I, <laughs> no problem. All right. We'll move on to uh, item seven, new business. Quarterly reports ending 1231-2020. You should have all received a copy of those. If anyone has any questions, please signify or speak up. Mr. Chamara? No, nothing. Mr. Shedd? No, I, I have no questions at this point. Okay, Mr. Bernardi? Nothing. Mr. Bradrick? No questions. Thank you, sir. Mr. Kelleher. Uh, no questions unless Janice has anything she wants to bring to our attention. Okay. Uh, Mr. Fortin? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Charlene? Nothing. All right. And are you still there? There you are, Michelle. Anything? I'm still here. No questions. Okay. Karen, is there anything that you would like to add? Um, one, one thing I would like to point out on the Selectman's uh, General Government Expenditure Report, just, just to kind of keep everybody um, in the loop of what's going on. So um, this current fiscal year, we had budgeted um, two full-time staff members for the Selectman's office. Um, and we did not budget for part-time staff because we were with hopes that our current, one of our current employees would have went full time because there's a need for it in that office. However, um, that was not able to happen. So when you look at the budget, I just wanted to explain when you see um, a negative number in the part-time staff, it's because we wanna be transparent. Um, speaking with the auditors, we asked them if we could just overexpend that line item to show you that, you know, where the money's really being spent. So it doesn't make it look like we're trying to, you know, cover anything up. I, I just like to be transparent about that. So at the end of the fiscal year, you'll see um, that line item will be substantially overspent, but the selectman's full-time line item will be a surplus. <coughs> I just, it, it's such a large amount. I just wanted um, you to be aware of why we're doing it that way. Thank you. Janice, is there anything you'd like to point out or? Um, no, basically, um, some of the expenditures that were in reported in my report have since been moved over to grant money. So uh, some of these, because we've been starting to receive the grant monies. It was slow in coming, but we finally received this year's, uh, some of this year's monies, and I've been putting in for more reimbursement. So some of the items look like they're overspent, but um, the next quarterly report, it will reflect all of those changes. All right. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions or comments on the quarterly reports? Hearing none, we will move on to public comment. Crystal. Hello. Um, do we have anybody that... Uh, put in any uh, questions or comments on the chat portion? Uh, no, I don't see any questions in the chat box. All right, thank you. Uh, anyone else have any questions here? Uh, do we have anybody that is, or would like to make a comment? Under public comment, anyone? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to item nine, other from the board. Mr. Chamara, you have anything? No. Nope. Mr. Shedd? Uh, no, sorry about that, no. Okay. Mr. Bernardi? 
No, nothing. Thank you, Michael. Okay, Mr. Braderick. I have nothing. Thank you, sir. Mr. Kelleher. I'm all set. Thank you, Michael. All right. Mr. Fortin. I don't have anything to bring up tonight either. Thank you, David. Charlene? No. Nothing. And where'd she go? Oh, there she is. You keep moving around <laughs> there, Michelle. Do you have anything? I'm in the same spot. <laughs> I have nothing. Nothing? All nothing. right. Thank you. All right. Under uh, correspondence and announcements, uh, I just... I just wanted to bring up that uh, we did, in fact, uh, we were notified by our attorney that the uh, governor's executive orders uh, were extended until the 20th of April. Uh, that hasn't been uh, broken down yet as to exactly which ones they are. That, that, that's supposed to be coming out very shortly. Uh, which portions of which executive orders are still going to be in place uh, or be removed. But as of right now, it's uh, a blanket uh, extension to the uh, uh, 20th of April. So I don't know how things are gonna change or whatever, but we'll see. Maybe he'll, uh, maybe he'll have something to say uh, when he gives his budget address tomorrow. So if anybody's interested in uh, a snore fest, you could probably watch the uh, the governor give his uh, facts and figures. Uh, and the only other thing that I have to say is that uh, I would like to uh, thank Crystal, Crystal for doing a fantastic job keeping all this running because this is different than even the last several that we had done uh, because I now also have to be at home to do it. Uh, I used to share the room with uh, Jay, myself, Karen, with Crystal acting as the host, but now we all have to be separated. So uh, again, thank you very much, Crystal. Wonderful job. Uh, and uh, Cynthia, uh, I want to thank you too. Uh, you've been doing a good job with the minutes, and and I know it's got to be tough, but it's uh, it's it's been uh, so far. We're 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 hanging in there. Uh, and then the only other thing is, so as of right now, our March second meeting is canceled. The next meeting will be March the 9th. 7 p.m. and that will be the Board of Selectmen's uh, presentation followed by the Board of Ed the next Tuesday, the 16th, and then the 23rd currently scheduled for the combined budgets. All right. Anyone have any other questions or anything? Going once, going twice. All right, then I guess uh, adjournment is in order. So moved. All right. We have a move, we have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. I wanna thank you all. I want, uh, I want to wish you all, you know, good health. Stay safe out there and uh, we'll see you on the ninth. Have a great night. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye, Mike. Yep. Thank you. Thank Good you. Night. Good night.